All right, welcome back. This is my second part of my steelhead mission to start off 2023. If you missed the first part, check it out. It was my last video. Caught a few steelhead. It was pouring rain. Luckily, right now, it looks like the rain stopped. I don't know if it's gonna come back later in the day, but either way, we're gonna go see if we can find a few steelhead here. I'm gonna fish this evening, take a rest, and then I'll come back and hit it again tomorrow. In California, we've been having terrible, terrible weather. So I said this in my last video, but I'll say it again. I'm just happy to get out here. But hopefully, I can put a few steelhead on the line. Maybe show a few off to the camera and have a little fun while we're at it. It's about two o'clock right now, so I got a few hours to fish this afternoon. Hoping I can put a few fish on the line before the sun sets. We'll see you guys out here. All right, back at the grind. We get one first cast. So I said this in my last video, but we're working with high water and dirty water. So it's making the fishing a little bit tough, but um, I was able to get a few in the last video. Hoping I can get a few more in this video. Shoot. Well, I don't know if I was recording there. I think I might have not been recording, but literally third cast through, got this nice one to hit. Not sure what the deal with this guy is. I think he's probably been hooked, maybe hooked and released or either hooked and maybe someone lost him. But yeah, his jaw's a little messed up there. Oh, you know what? Someone definitely lost him. There's a hook inside his mouth. In California, you can keep two hatchery steelhead per person per day, uh, as long as they're fin clipped there, but yeah. Nice fish on like the third cast. I don't think I was recording, unfortunately, so you didn't get to see the bobber down, but anyways, we'll try and get another one so you guys can see it. All right, well, apologies for the camera mishap. Thumbed I wasn't recording for that one, but just for that, I'm gonna have to get another one. Oh, man. Right as this light is getting pretty low here, probably only have about 30 minutes, maybe even less left of light. And that was definitely a fish. Dang it. I know for sure that was a fish because I've drifted through that area so many times and the bobber has never gone down. So if there was like a big rock or something there that my bait caught on, uh, it would have went down more than once through that same area. And that at that particular spot where that one hit, it has never gone down in that spot. Watch, I'll cast through there. All right, running the same exact line from where that fish bit. And unless another fish hits, that bobber's not gonna go anywhere. Right through there, right there, that's where it got hit. No movement. You can tell it's not even bouncing off the bottom. If it was bouncing off the bottom, that bopper would be ticking up and down every once in a while. Oh man, that was it. That was the one. Oh. Oh, Scared me. All right, I'm gonna cast right through where that fish just jumped. That's it, time to go. Man, it was a wet one today, but tomorrow is supposed to be better weather, so I don't know how it's gonna affect the fishing, but at least it should be a little more pleasant out there. A little less wet. Yeah, I think I was just too caught up in the fishing for us to press record, but anyways, caught one, lost one, and tomorrow I'm gonna come out. I'm gonna catch one for you guys before I leave here, so I'm gonna go out there, and if I don't catch one, I'm, I'm gonna stay out there until it gets dark if I have to. But anyway, just picked up some takeout, gonna eat some dinner. But I did wanna show you guys one thing. So I showed you guys the Airbnb in my last video. This is the one that I'm staying in for a few days, but I discovered something this morning. I don't know, you guys, let me know what you guys think. So everything here is great. I mean, the Airbnb is great, but I noticed one thing. So this is like the hallway and then there's a rug here. I noticed when you step on it, 
I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it sounds like kind of metal. So I was like, hmm, what's going on here? And then I pulled the rug up and there's like a, I don't even know what that is. It's like an entryway to below the house. Kind of creepy, but I don't know. Maybe that's normal. It kind of looks like a heater or something like that. Maybe at one time. If you know what I'm looking at here, let me know what that is. Gonna eat some dinner, tap some liters for tomorrow, and then get some rest. Long day of fishing today. We'll see you guys in the morning. All right, 6 a.m. Let's go get them. Woo! That was close. Another day on the river. See what the river has for me today. Oh, man, rough morning. Nothing yet, but like I said yesterday, I'm not leaving here until I get one. But I did want to show you guys something. So you can see there is some carcasses, spines. Look down here. There's like all, I don't even know what that's, just like old bones. Okay, there's the tail of the fish. And most likely those are from king salmon. So most of the time when steelhead are coming up the river, they're following the king salmon. And uh, like I said, I'm not sure if I said it, I think I might have said it in my last video, um, the steelhead eat all of the salmon row. Well, not all of it, but they eat what they can as they come up and uh, that gives them nutrients to keep going. At least in most of California, the king salmon typically, well, at least the biggest run comes up in the fall, late fall, like October, September, October, November, something like that. And then the steelhead follow that. So December, January, February, March, maybe even into April, uh, the steelhead come up. And so it's not uncommon when you're out here steelhead fishing to see, you know, old carcasses. Sometimes there's even some old salmon, some late runs, late fish that are coming up at the end of the run. It's coming up and spawning, um, but it's definitely not uncommon to see the carcasses on the riverbanks as well. So anyways, like I said, I'm not leaving until I catch one today. So I'm going to switch things up a little bit, get back in there. We got to get one. Oh, there we go. Little guy. Yeah, little one. wild fish. Well, he's got a scar there from a bird or something. Got that out. Yeah, a little native. It's got that full dorsal fin and everything. All right, let's get him on his way. She goes. All right, well, we finally got one. That was a nice little native fish. You can tell the native fish um, because they have a, that full dorsal fin. Sometimes in the hatchery they either misclip or just, I don't know what happens, they forget to clip them or whatever. Uh, maybe the fish escaped before they had a chance to clip the fins. But anyways, I'm pretty sure that one was a true native fish. And I've noticed that the native fish jump a lot more than the standard. Ooh, I think I might have another bite there. I noticed that the native fish jump a lot more than the uh, the, the hatchery fish and that one once it hit it was swimming right at me and then it came all the way up here and then it started fighting a little bit more but anyways finally got one shout out to the guy who was fishing here he caught like four or five this morning i forgot his i didn't catch his name but anyway he watches the channel shout out to him another thing i switched is before i was using the beads and um, i mentioned this in my last video but with this high and dirty water um, i got to do something a little bit more uh, noticeable for these fish so I actually switched out the beads and now I'm using actual row that I cured from uh, one of the fish that I caught in my previous video so I think the natural scent definitely helped me there Oh. 
Big fish. Big fish. Oh no no. Dang it. Dang. Came off. Uh, barbless hook. There's another one. Oh, that's a good one. All the way out of the water. That's a good fish. Big pin coming right up. Try to get him over here in the softer water. Oh, that's a nicer fish. That's a nicer fish. That's a nice one. That is a nice one. All right. I think I'm actually gonna release this one. I'm not sure if it's spawning currently or, I don't know, it looks kind of skinny. I'm not sure, maybe it's spawned out female. Pretty sure it's a hen, yeah. Another hatchery fish, but I'm gonna go ahead and release him. Here it goes. All right, came out here and did what I wanted to do, catch some fish. It was a fun and adventurous mission. Stayed in a somewhat sketchy Airbnb and caught some fish on the river. If you haven't seen part one, check it out. I'll leave it linked in the description. Where am I going? But yeah, caught quite a few fish. I think in total over the two videos I caught Six or seven fish, maybe more, I kind of forgot. But anyways, yeah, fun fishing on the river. I love fishing on the river, I love float fishing on the river, especially, whether it be for salmon, steelhead, or whatever. Always a fun time. If you want to come out here and do it, make sure you get that good long rod, like I was saying earlier in the video. I like to use a 10 footer, and then like a 3,000, 4,000 size reel. You don't need anything too special. Um, but yeah, if you want a more in-depth breakdown of the bobber setup, I said this in my last video, but I'm gonna do a video on my Patreon so if you're interested, check that out. I'll leave a link in the description. But yeah, <sighs> fun little mission. Time to get back to the bay. I don't know when we're gonna get out again. We're supposed to get hit. Today was like a really nice weather day. You can see it's blue skies in the background, but we're supposed to get hit with a few more storms here over the next couple weeks. So I don't really know where we're gonna go fishing next, but we'll figure something out. Thank you guys for watching and Better get out of the woods before something attacks me in here. We'll see you guys next time.